This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And this is the show where we talk with people in and around independent professional wrestling. And this week is no different. We got we got a couple guys here in studio. We'll get to them in just a moment. But first, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Where you can find this and other great wrestling podcasts that we're doing here on the Sorgatron Media Network. As well as over at IndieWrestling.us where we do also drop the Indie Mayhem Show. And you can see a lot of people featuring featured on this show over there on VOD, DVD, uh, and of course the Indie Wrestling Network at IndieWrestling.network uh, as well uh, with uh, a lot of the promotions that we work with here. Uh, you can also drop us a line at GoodTimesAtWrestlingMayhemShow.com or over at 412-206-WMS0. That's where you can uh, drop any questions you have for anybody we have announced over on the uh, on the Facebook pages. Uh, that will that we do Facebook Live for these as well. Or if you have a suggestion on who we should talk to on this show, uh, we do take recommendations on people we might be missing. It's a big, wide indie, indie wrestling world, and we do appreciate any uh, any any guidance out there. Anybody, anything we can't watch all the indie wrestling. Hell, I can't even watch all the WWE from week to week. So we we appreciate the help out there, guys, because I know there's a lot of people even in the chat room from across the country that do help us uh, keep an eye out on stuff. So with us this week, we have one return and one newbie to the show with us. First of all, back on the show is one Darren De Niro. He's waving. He's silently waving to you guys so. if you're on audio. It's an audio. We got yeah. a lot of we got a lot of audio podcast listeners. Just to throw that out <laughs> there for the visuals. <laughs> Yeah, he's making them go to Facebook. You have to watch it. There you go. Yeah, you will not. That's called marketing, sword. You're welcome. (laughs) Darren De Niro back with us. How you doing? It's been a while. I'm here. I think we were we were in a basement last time you were here. You were. I'm trying. What were you guys doing? What What were you guys doing in a basement? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Well, I'm trying to think how many. I know the first time I was on. This is my third time. First time was in 2015. Yes. First time was 2015. Okay. Because it was tough enough. Was going on. I was, a, I was a future boy on the Tough Enough thing front page. Oh, and yeah. Naked. And then I was right before I went to England, and then that all happened. And I think, I want to say 16. Well, that, worked out, that worked out what? good, because we know how like Tough Enough works out for the winners. Yeah, I mean, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> So, but anyways, we got we got your, your Sadie Gang yeah. partner with us. First time on the show, First Colby time. Red is with us. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm here as well. <laughs> Not a tough enough competitor. So just, <laughs> I wasn't a competitor. I was just, hang, they, just, they, just used, they just used me to, I, to be on their screens. I guess too. You, like, you made like like the 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 commercial, right? Like you yeah, were, I was in the commercial. I was on WWE's YouTube. I'm pretty sure yeah. I'm still on there. My like my students find it and laugh at me still. And like, hey, I guess you weren't tough enough. Oh yeah, they, they yeah, I get that line a lot. Yeah, I guess you weren't tough enough. Um, I was on the actual like main tough enough page. Like, you went to sign up or just check yeah. it out. I was on like. First thing, like top contenders were like at some. I was on there for like a vote or something they had going on at the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was really featured on it. Um, but yeah, there was a few. I I I don't have, like like I said, I don't have a cool backstory. I I live a pretty okay life so far. I'm nothing traumatic (laughs) to me. Damn your normal life upbringing. It's the worst. (laughs) You're not. You don't have. You're not getting. You're not (laughs) getting a movie like Paige did. No, I mean it'd be really. (laughs) It'd probably probably be. It'd probably be like an art project. Like it'd be really artistic Uh, shots. Okay, get it through. All right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the newbie, Colby Red, we got to put you through your paces and have people uh, get to know. If you want to know more, again, look up Darren DeNaro on WrestlingMayhemShow.com, and uh, you'll find our past interviews with him where we, uh, you know, grow them. Uh, uh, the cliff notes, uh, people chant about his hair. Um, he's from, he, <laughs> he's local, and I think he's the last surviving member uh, professionally of his uh, initial uh, team. Last surviving in general. They're all dead. Oh, oh Okay. They've all died. They've all died. <laughs> like it's they actually just, kind of wild. But they I'm... just stopped lifting weights and withered. No, away like no, like I, I mean, everyone dust. knows about Vic Adonis dying in Mexico, but um, <laughs> many people don't know about Roger Corpo also passing on. So it's actually kind of wild. I'm I am a true like last last of a dying breed. Joe Russ is out there somewhere. He was in my training class. Uh, no, 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 no. But he was the leader of the faction. Uh, so. Oh, oh, the faction too. Yeah, true. That yes. One, yeah. But yeah, he's the only <laughs> one still alive. But 
So yeah, it's uh, it's wild. So Colby, first of all, I think we're having a little pre uh, discussion about this, but uh, I like to uh, do a little break the ice question for uh, newbies on the show. We'll get to know you. What is your earliest memory of professional wrestling? Earliest memory of professional wrestling was watching with my dad. Uh, he introduced me to it. I can't name out anything like specific what we were watching, but mm-hmm. I just remember it always being on. All right. And was it something that um, you wanted to be in there? Like, when did you decide you wanted to get into the ring for to do this? <laughs> so I didn't decide I wanted to wrestle until I started okay. because I've played baseball my entire life. Okay. So that was always like the route I was going to take. So since I was five, I was playing baseball. That's what I went to college for. I was talking to scouts from the Rockies and the Mariners. So mm-hmm. like in my head, I was going to go play minor league baseball. And that's all I was ever going to do. And my junior year, I tore my elbow. And it was like, okay, what do I do now? Well, I'm in pretty good shape. Like maybe I'll get into like bodybuilding. Well, I'm 6'2 and I have super lanky arms. So that didn't work out. But from like posting pictures and everything, a company in Erie found me. So asked me to come try out, see how that would work out. I uh, went to the first tryout, and that's pretty much when I decided I wanted to be a wrestler. So was it? I mean, you know, baseball the old way. The old school way. You <laughs> show a big up, athletic guy and say way. you should try this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You what weren't you bouncing kid? at a bar or anything. Wishes. <laughs> that's a whole other podcast. So. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So you're up there. I mean, baseball. Uh, I don't quite consider that. Correct me if I'm wrong. A very high impact sport. As far as training and everything, how was it going from there to the the hit with the ninety mile per hour fastball? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, all my bones and ligaments stay differently. But uh, yeah, I mean, I played football for four years in oh, okay. high school as well, so yeah, I've always been throwing myself around. So going from that to throwing yourself at a ring uh, kind of worked out for you. Yeah, easy transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so you started up with the Erie. My uh, um, I, I presume that was the PWR promotion up there. Correct. Okay. Um, now the first time I, I met you, you had a hole in your head. <laughs> yeah. Did I? Is that getting brought up today? Yes. Uh, yeah, we're we're doing the whole the whole breath. Like, we get, like I said, we're, where did this guy come from? That's hanging out with Darren these days. This guy sitting right here. Uh, I thought I was cool back then. Like I don't know. Like I'm just gonna do something a little different. And uh, then I met Darren, and I was like. Well, he pretty much told me if we're gonna do this, you can't, you know, put paint yeah, on that your was face Nick's anymore. That from day one. I'm like, I swear, if, if I see a blue in your head, I'm washing it off, I'm holding you down, and I'm washing it off. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, just a, so so when I saw you, you were in a tag team with PB Smooth. Yeah. You had, wait, wait, what was your name? I remember having trouble spelling it. My name? Yeah, the, the your tag te- your tag team name. Upper echelon. Upper I echelon. That for a second. <laughs> I had to go. I think thankfully yeah. one of you had your T-shirt, and I was like, "All right, that's yeah, how yeah, I spell yeah. echelon." Okay. Yeah. <laughs> PB Smooth and Colby Red. Yeah, with that a, made perfect sense. With a hole in his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, the rich dude and the dude with a hole in his head. Like, hey, we should be a tag team. Yeah, it made sense. <laughs> you train together. Training together brings all walks of life together. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Or against each other. Yeah. What's the matter? Awesome. So, so I, uh, you know, you moved to this, and it was it just Darren's uh, uh, insistence that 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 aspect went away. Um, I think. Well, I took like a little break. Colby from Red was happily retired. Yeah, very that's, happily retired. And that's a I thing to note. Ruined for sure. his life by bringing him back. <laughs> so yeah. ruined slash made it better at the same time. That's, well, that's if, true. If you guys are on visual, I mean, it's easy. You can just look up Colby Red on Google Images, and you'll find something <laughs> sooner or later. That. that here's here's you from a, I think awesome. a, a PB, P, PWR show. It looks like a, looks like the upper echelon exploded on this show because oh, it looks man. like you're uh, oh, that the, one? the headshot Colby Red. This I headshot. haven't heard. I didn't know. He, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's headshot versus yeah, the headshot. seven foot savage PV Smooth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I beat the crap out of him that show. <laughs> amazing so tell me about so tell me about sadie gang what was the inception of sadie gang for you guys it kind of came out i'll start it because it kind of so like i said literally he was happily retired i'm wrestling by mm -hmm. myself doing my thing and and, so you you had you kind of come out of crossroads you were kind of like stepped out of it for a bit kind of uh pretty much what happened with me is like i moved from erie to pittsburgh Mm -hmm. i got a full-time job as a mechanical engineer And I got a promotion to project engineer. And right around that time is when everything was also going very well with wrestling. I was Mm -hmm. traveling a lot. And I know that sounds like a good problem to have, but 
I've like never really half-assed anything. So I didn't want to spread myself too thin anywhere because just with what I do for work, like I was stressed out a lot. So I was like working a full week, driving Fridays to go up to Cleveland for AIW, yeah. wherever I was working Saturday. And then Sunday I was working like shows up in Canada, Alpha One in Greektown. Jeez. So I would get home at like 3.30 in the morning and then have to drive into work at like 6. So, and, it, and this was, you were already had ties for up being up north to begin mm-hmm. with yeah so that, that exactly. was just your travel just became longer at that point mm-hmm. so yeah it just got to a point where it was too much with everything going on and i just had to kind of step back and focus on work and you know like darren said i was happily retired like i was just living life being a 24 year old kid like i had money like it was everything was cool and then we became best friends somehow in in the mix yeah, it, sure it, well, yeah. We it was funny because we just started hanging out a bunch. Oh, sorry, we just started hanging out a bunch, and I was thinking about quitting. Um, mm-hmm. I was working full time as well, mm-hmm. and I I want to make it real clear. Like, it's not that we don't have a passion for wrestling. We never lost the passion. It's just like, you know, wrestling was the main and p- probably only priority. And now it's not that we not a main priority to us. We still care a lot. We still want to put a you know be our best every time we're out there. It's there's other priorities too. Like you know, I a lot of people don't have what we have you know we have college degrees we have backup plans you know Mm -hmm. so it was one of those cases at the time when it first started um i was working my job as an education coordinator for a a group home and i was like you know what i i think you know i i I don't say i wasted a lot of my my 20s i'm still in my 20s but like on my early 20s with wrestling uh it just felt like i just wanted to be a normal 20 something for a second i didn't want to have to like okay i want to go here and travel here Mm -hmm. and i got at the time i wasn't wrestling a lot to begin with because i uh i uh stepped away from rock stars because it was i I moved back home from dayton the four hours of weekly wasn't too much now that i was working full time you know i wasn't a substitute teacher anymore Mm -hmm. and that's rockstar pro for yeah yeah rockstar pro in dayton i just didn't have the flexibility in my schedule just to like hey i'm gonna do out you know and it's just one of those things i just wanted to like wrestle on my own terms you know and not have to like constantly do this do this and just like just grind myself down with Mm -hmm. uh the travel because i mean trust me if you do four hours each way a week for you know nine months out of the year when i'm not coaching wrestling the only time i had a time off it 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 is very very uh taxing on you and like i said just you know depreciation on your vehicle Mm-hmm. so um sorry you know i always get you know me on tangents but um yeah i was thinking about uh stepping away just in general because i was wrestling iwc i wasn't really going anywhere mm-hmm. i mean i wasn't i mean I, I i was you know i just beat pollock um retired him for a hot second or kicked him out for a hot second <laughs> yeah. until he somehow came back two weeks later but pollock we miss you yeah we you, do miss you yeah, you're very pc and keep your knee better yeah. um we'll be over soon yeah we'll be over don't worry <laughs> uh we've made amends but uh yeah so i it's like i'm just floating around um i became a true heavyweight and i wasn't really uh the super indie crowd anymore mm. um so i was like you know what i don't really uh know if i want to do this anymore because i don't know if uh I can compete at the highest level I want to. And I just want to just do other things. I have other passions, you know, I, I coach wrestling. I enjoy working with kids, helping them out. You know, I teach now. So, uh, I, I, I've, I've seen shows where you explain to the front row that you actually teach wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a match very, before. very legitimate. <laughs> I think like rural Valley or Clearfield one time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a legitimate wrestling coach. I've been coaching for like four, like five years now. So mm. like, yeah. And like I, I teach high school now. So, uh, at a private prep school. So, it is a pri- it is a private prep school. Just make yeah. that very clear. Uh, yeah, I teach adjudicated youth, so I have all like former <laughs> criminals. Well, actually, current criminals that I have to try to educate. But um, yeah, it's always fun. Uh, but yeah, so it was just um, it was just a lot. So I was getting ready, and he's like, "Hey, um, why don't you want to wrestle?" And I'm like, "I know I'm not sure if I'm having fun with it." And you know, it's especially this guy. I'm not making the money. You know, which like there's a point if you're making enough money, you go, you don't need to have fun. <laughs> Yeah. You don't need to have fun. You're making it's your money. job. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the goes, fun job, but it's your job. And mm-hmm. he actually, I mean, the video I'm pretty sure is on our YouTube where yeah. I was actually getting ready to announce my retirement. Mm-hmm. And he cuts me off. And then Which, he, and he pl- pl- plants this idea in my mind that, hey, um, you're a pretty good tag team wrestler, weren't you? And I was like, yeah, I wasn't bad. You know, I won some tag team titles for the people various places. He goes, well, I was a pretty good tag team wrestler too. You know, we were both good as individuals. So why don't we just team up? It's like, you know, it's like anything, you know, with, with Antonio Brown getting shopped around, like what's a good fit? You know, maybe you have a young quarterback that needs a good receiver and, you know, you have, you know, an athletic striker and then you have a big power guy. Maybe this could be a good fit. And that's uh, how it became a thing. But then we also, uh, well, you want to talk about how we came up with our training module and how we, uh, 
decided to do. You do. want to dive into that? Well, you That's want. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying how we got the idea for it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just like Darren was saying. We both. He teaches adjudicated youth. Like he has children's lives in his hands. I'm a mechanical engineer, so you know we're both highly intelligent people and, and very important jobs. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we started to think, you know, if we're going to do this, let's let's attack it from a whole new angle and let's really try to think what we can do to give ourselves kind of an edge over competition because we've both been traveling and wrestling for how long that we know how things work so if we could do something to put us maybe a step above everyone else that's where you know we might start to be dangerous yeah. so yeah we, i mean we got so far doing what we did yeah but then you know maybe we need to uh, excuse me uh, break through that glass ceiling per se uh you know old albert einstein said the uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So mm. maybe I think, need... I think you explained a lot of indie wrestlers careers. Next up. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyways, yeah. so we, uh, we decided oh, it, it's worth mentioning. We, you know, yeah. there, there are, there are a lot of people that will, you know, have spent, you know, so many years in a location or a, a region and do the same thing and, you know, wonder why they're not places, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, that was the thing too. Like, for, like, I will be wrestling five years this September. Wow. So like, I like, no, I'm not crazy or anything. I'm, but like, I've done a fair amount of short amount of time, like three years, like the big, my first three years, I pumped through some stuff. So, uh, and the same thing for him. Like, so it was one of those things like just to focus on one thing at a time right now. Like our focus is IWC right now. That is yeah. what we're doing. We want to be, you know, mainstays. We want to be, you know, the guys of the tag team division. We want to be, you know, um, right up there. We want to make it, you know, we're a tag team match can main event a show. So, and that's what we're trying to uh, get to right now with our uh, alternative training methods, trying to be the best team out there uh, by every facet of imaginable. And these alternative training methods? Uh, we think they're working great. Okay. Like, yeah. really great. Uh, you know, we, we, we've, we've improved our endurance by going to a country concert. Have you ever been to a country concert, Sword? Uh, I think my first concert was maybe Billy Ray Cyrus. No, that was my second. The first it was REO. So, but no, I'm familiar. Those Do you things... know what my first concert was? What? Aaron Carter. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a real good one. I forget what mine is. My, my parents took a lot of rock shows when I was a kid. But uh, we digress. Um, those things are marathons. Definite marathons and not sprints. Not yeah. sprints in any way. So uh, if you could survive one of those, I'm pretty sure you could survive, you know, maybe a 15-minute wrestling match. Okay. Um, uh, we uh, we went to his realm a little bit. We, we did some baseball training for some hand eye, some quickness. Uh, what else have we done? What else have we done? Yeah. We've done endurance. We went to Triple B Farms. Maybe we'd use our brain there. Strategy test, and problem solving. Test our brains. You know, really work our intelligence. Because you know, you wait, wait, is, is this day. was the corn maze. The corn yes. maze. This is the corn maze. All right, here's a little footage of the corn maze. Um, it's. <laughs> If you guys are with us on the video version and all these you can look up the sadie gang on uh youtube as well for all of these videos uh to see what's going on with them i mean we, we may have um um explored the whole triple b farm before mm. getting into the corn maze but uh yeah it was it was a it was a brain teaser let me tell you um yeah so there's a lot of these videos i think you're lifting pumpkins at this point Yes, we are doing bicep curls uh, okay. just because we wanted to get some blood flowing before we had to think. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we were inspecting the pumpkins. You know, we kind of wanted one too while we were there. I, I took one home. Yeah, you yeah, did. I, I brought a pumpkin home. Um, and, and tell me, Sadie Gang, where did the name come from? Um, it's it's named after my um, adorable 10-pound uh, Australian Shepherd, toy Australian Shepherd. Mm -hmm. uh, you could follow her on Instagram at uh, Sadie Aussie Dog. Um, She's awesome. There she is, yeah. Uh, in my arms. There it's my baby. Is. So uh, she's a big inspiration for all of us. Everyone loves her. Uh, mm -hmm. She's a cutie. You know, she brings happiness to all of our lives. And uh, why not name ourselves after something as important as, as her? That's awesome. And this is a video where you guys went to the dog park to train like Sadie. Yeah, she helped us out mm -hmm. a lot. You know, she, you know she's an athlete. She, Sadie's, you know, she, Sadie's as, fast. as told in the, in the uh, video, she's a double herder. Um, so like usually when you have a toy Australian shepherd, she's purebred, she has her pedigree papers. Um, usually you have a show dog and a herder, you know, they're mm -hmm. now she meant to herd, so, but somehow it worked out that. Oh wait, I think, I think I just missed it. There, there's, there's the paper yeah, right there's, there. You those actually, are her those... legitimate pedigree papers. Yeah. Like what you see in our videos is very legitimate. There's, this is as real as it gets. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she is a double herder. So I, I didn't have her when she was a puppy puppy. That's my girlfriend's dog first. 
Uh, but she was very nippy at first, like trying to herd people. And she will try to herd us when we go out. Like she'll like cycle back and forth, to, like keep us in a line, like a pack. So she is a very, very uh, athletic. Dog. She bullies our uh, our roommate's dog, who's a, like a 35 pound uh, beagle lab mix, and she bullies him every day. And he's terrified of her. <laughs> she hates him. She's cool. That our dogs hates him. So yeah, and we 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 have a little bit of the country concert uh, as well. Uh, is this? <laughs> oh yeah, I got the sickest USA chant. We guy. did. Yeah. That was awesome. Sweet. So how's it been going for you since you've been in the in the team? Has this been a rejuvenate, rejuvenating the energy for you a little bit? I mean, when we actually get out there, it's pretty good. It's mm. just uh, mm. the fact of getting us out there, which uh, has to go to the old Booker man. I mean, I don't know how you don't let an undefeated team wrestle every week, every month, but apparently that, that happens. Yeah, we need to really let everyone know that we're undefeated. We've never been pinned or submitted as a tag team. Uh, yeah, no, never pinned, never submitted. Um, our only... Loss. Mm. Well, if you want to call it a loss, is we didn't uh, we didn't uh, win the battle royal because um, there was some dispute over the rules. Um, apparently, you can eliminate yourself. Oh, I'm still. Apparently, if I, was, I mean, but Macho Man ran over himself and he got to go back in. So apparently, once you get Macho Man level, you can do whatever the hell you want in battle royal. But our level, apparently not. And I was almost positive I could do whatever the hell I wanted, and that just didn't work out. Yeah, I, I we were really sold, and it was football down by contact. Like someone had to escort you over. Mm-hmm. and we were we were That's set cool. um but yeah apparently not so but uh i mean allegedly we we may have interjected ourselves a little bit but the last show but we made our mark at the last show yeah apparently and and now we are in a, a tag team title match i say tell me a little bit about what happened last show uh um, why don't you tell us sword that'd probably be yeah. a lot more helpful we know I, as much as you do about i think i sent you a footage show. i sent you footage you did send us i appreciate yeah, you always sending us footage yes um uh, you guys Kirsch, Kirsch filled us send us footage well. um that could eventually be uh seen also on uh, indie wrestling.us that's uh, right by our dvd by uh source dvds thank you that's right and it is our in DVD. the works and it should be up this week so yeah so delay. um yeah so why don't you tell us so we we, we were there you were there, main event culmination. We're mm-hmm. uh, in the ring, and you guys uh, ran out. And <laughs> yeah. uh, apparently, it was part of a big night for you guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we it was our uh, joint birthday celebration because uh, we our birthdays are eight days apart. You're, you're tenth, right? Yeah, I'm on the tenth. Yeah, so eight days apart. Eight days apart. So we decided to have our joint birthday celebration on the sixteenth. On a team, as you do. Yeah, uh, yeah. I happened to get done with my wrestling tournament a little early. Because mm. uh, sadly, some of my kids didn't play, so I was a little upset. Um, but uh, so we decided to go out earlier and uh, enjoy our, our enjoy our uh, party earlier. And um, yeah, apparently we were there, and uh, things happened. Yeah, we we we, uh, we, we I guess we uh, as they say, stuck our nose into some business. And now we're in a now we're man tag match. And now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> now funny we're here. how things work out. <laughs> yes. And now you're on the IWC show up here in March, which I believe is 18. Yes. Somebody, yeah. somebody thought it was 16. I'm yeah. like, no, no, we increase it every year. Yeah, no, it's it's like, yeah, yeah you got to go with the actual anniversary year, not just whatever sounds That's cool. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, IWC's legal now. It could go uh, <laughs> go down to the corner store and buy some chewing tobacco if it so pleases. So That's I'm, what comes to your mind when you think of turning 18. I mean, I am from Elizabeth, so. I have a whole different turning I mean, 18. Available yeah, I mean, thing. I'm from a key sport, so it's a little different. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> does that have to do with anything? It has to do with a lot of things. <laughs> well, anyways, so uh, just to wrap this up here. Uh, so, so you know, you guys have been at this for a little bit here. What is the best and worst thing about tag team wrestling? Go for it. I'm waiting for you. I'm trying to think for a second. I'm honestly trying to give a real good answer. I know your answer. I don't want to rest the whole match anymore. Yeah, <laughs> that's your answer. I can you take a break when I feel like it. <laughs> yeah, you, you'd be like, "Hey, Colby, uh, cardio is You're less good. important." <laughs> that's a sensitive subject. Um, yeah. Okay, I Sorry. did cardio. Sorry, Bill Rigby. Actually. I, I actually, I actually do cardio now. I, uh, oh, I, I, I go to six cycle. Oh, yeah. We both go to we go six, six cycle, cycle in, Pittsburgh. Uh, in Pittsburgh. It's the very uh, we, we like we like spinning now. We do spinning. Yeah, classes. we do spin classes. We together. might be the only two males in the class, maybe outside of the teacher sometimes, but we go to spinning. I want to become an instructor. Yeah, we do. We both want to eventually become instructors. Yeah, we do like spin classes, like little pump and all that stuff. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. What is it about spinning that has attracted you? Uh, uh, my girlfriend girl wanted to teach to. it. Oh. <laughs> my girlfriend was like, "Hey, support me." I'm like, "Okay, I will come with you." And that's, that's what how... I meant to support Darren's girlfriend. Yeah, that too, or, or, or just what he said. 
for him. This is this is this is a surprising turn in this interview. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the best part of tag team wrestling. The best part <laughs> as, of tag team wrestling. Right. <laughs> and can... and and we can hit cooler moves together. Okay. Yeah. Like I finally found someone who's like actually stronger than me, if mm. not like equally as strong. So we can throw people like rag dolls, which is awesome. Yeah, it's like, like when you play Capcom versus Marvel, you do those tag team moves. Right. Yeah. Sweet. You know? Right. And it's really cool that, like, my actual life best friend is in the ring with me. So yeah, that's pretty like, cool, too. Like, when I, like... Make fun of Other teams, stuff. you know, I maybe just text my partner every day, and now I see him every day. Like, we, as of now, we live six minutes away from each other. It, um, it, and we talked about this uh, before, um, you know, before shows and, and everything. Like, um, you guys um, are really dedicated to your ring, your, your ring intro. For, mm-hmm. for, for first of all you got some uh, pretty great music and and it just seems like uh between the signs and everything the uh do it for sadie and everything we got a couple great gifts over on the indie wrestling.us uh giphy page uh mm-hmm. of you guys um it, it seems like you know the crowd is kind of invested in that a little bit it, it's, it's a groundswell you know mm. there it's it's not we're never the machine. We're never backed by the machine uh, at WC as, at, just per se. You know, we're definitely – we feel we're a team of the people. You either enjoy okay. it or get behind us or you're not. You know, we're not going to be, you know, reminded about every single week like some other people on the roster. So we just try to do our thing. We try to hopefully put a product out that mm-hmm. people can get behind. I think a lot of people have latched onto it and get behind because, you know, we're very much like the everyman. Just uh, do and, thing. and eventually you'll get your Kofi Kingston on it. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Hopefully. So, who? He wrestles too. Oh. Don't worry about it. Just is that a good thing? I think so. I think so. I, I don't know. I mean, this week, yes. This week, yes. This week, this yes. Week. Okay. Okay. This week, yes. This okay. Week. Cool. We'll Please. see what happens next week. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, um, wait, wait. We got. Wait, wait. We got Was there something? Oh, missed? Yeah. We got. We got uh, ordered to do something real quick. So oh, we, you were ordered uh, to do something. Not ordered, but like highly suggested. So okay. Yeah. Highly, I don't okay. take orders. Um. So Justin Plummer sent me a message. <laughs> and said, hey guys, if it fits, please mention that front row VIP tickets are expected to sell out tonight and ringside are expected to sell out pre-sale. So if people want up close and to have a chair, they need to order. But we have room for everyone in general admission and people can still get tickets at the door. We may rival the Kurt Angle attendance with this one. So buy your tickets now. There you go. And this is as of there you go, uh, February 24th, uh, depending on when you're catching this podcast on the live stream here. And of course, we're talking about IWC 18 that's coming up on March 16th, I believe. Yes. Yes. The top of my Which head. is the only place you can see Sadie Gang. Yeah. IWC. IWC. Nowhere else in Pittsburgh, nowhere else in the country right now. Are you telling me that you have exclusivity? No, with... no. We just we just want only wrestle for IWC. We, That's we... what exclusivity means, Dan. It's like, he may say we're signed to a contract. We don't. It's... You are currently exclusive to iwc yes i'm winking yes I'm winking. yes but yeah yes. we we are iwc only you mm-hmm. will never see us at any other show and we promise that and if if iwc doesn't want us then we'll probably just quit so there you go <laughs> yeah we just because we have better things to do like i mean <laughs> then just try to just find somewhere else to wrestle so yeah iwc is our home it's uh we're not we don't want a new home we don't want to live town it's iwc or nothing there you go there you go all right guys we're gonna find you online uh, you can find me on Instagram at Darren underscore Denaro. I probably won't accept your follow request. Um, same thing for You're Twitter. Still private. Yeah, I'm private on Instagram. Christ, it's called dude. being a professional. I don't no, like, learn how to be a millennial and get uh, on social media. Um, like it's called I don't want creepy kids trying to creep on me. Um, yeah, so yeah, Darren underscore Denaro on Instagram. Uh, if I recognize you, you might get the acceptance. Uh, Darren underscore Denaro on Twitter. I think that's public right now. It could be private. Depends. Um, then it's Darren uh, De Niro on Facebook, and that's uh, you know friend me. If I recognize you and have mutual friends, I'll probably add you. So I'm a little harder to get than he is. Yeah, I'm pretty easy to get. Uh, just Colby underscore Red on Twitter. Real Colby Red on Instagram. That's two Ds. Yeah. Two Ds. Yep. Yeah. R E D D. And then uh, just Colby Red on Facebook, and I'll I'll pretty much accept anyone. What, so what, what's what's our what's our what's our Instagram though? The Sadie Gang Instagram. Real Sadie Gang. Real Sadie Gang. Okay. It's that link's also in my. Is there a fake Instagram. Sadie Gang? What is there? Is there another Sadie Gang? We're just covering all our bases. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Make sure we're more legitimate because we're real. <laughs> we're real ones. Yeah, real ones. One hundred percent real ones. You don't you don't come from a keyboard not be a real one. That's right. Once you do the type of stuff we're doing, someone's always going to try to fake it. Yeah. But no one can be like us. So <laughs> exactly. Uh, real quick, I do have a couple of uh, comments and questions in the chat room that we will. Uh, I'll pass this along. You can answer or not. Elijah Dean, for instance, wants me to ask them their opinions on fat people. Um, we worry about people's health. <laughs> health. 
<laughs> health and uh, cholesterol levels. Um, we're very yeah. PC. Uh, we don't believe in body shaming. Perfectly correct. Yeah. So be you, but we also worry about your cholesterol mm -hmm. and uh, heart problems from carrying that extra weight. So we maybe suggest that if, if, if for your health, losing pounds, but yeah, you know, if, if that's you, be you. Yeah. Because since we love everyone, we just want everyone to be around as long as possible. So we, yeah. yeah. But hey, if, if you love being big, be big. PC, you know. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Hey, we all are. Cutting that, cutting that soda. Are we? Yeah. You're the one always eating candy and stuff hey. on our videos. <laughs> uh, Chris in the chat room, uh, real quick, wants to ask your favorite uh, wrestling memories. Chris? Who? Chris. Chris. Uh, placing that? fourth in a PJW States was pretty cool. That was a good wrestling memory. <laughs> yeah. um, it my counts. Fir my first career pin, my freshman year of high school, my very first match as a varsity wrestler was pretty cool. Does he mean all wrestling or just pro, pro, pro wrestling? I'll go with that. Um, um, pro wrestling, tagging with him, uh, winning a championship nice, in England. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know. That's right. You did go to England. Yeah. Have you been on since? Yes, I think. Yeah, so they, but we, but we it was, it was, I was talking about other wrestling, not my wrestling at the yeah. time. But yeah, so those are probably the coolest ones. Uh, wrestling Shelton Benjamin was real cool. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anything else? What are you, Coley? What? Uh, my favorite pro wrestling moment has yet to happen. So, somewhere in the near future, for sure. What's that? What is it? Yeah. Because I'm done teaming with you. Oh. Oh, I don't know, dude. Oh. Oh. Oh, that hurts. oh. No, come on. I love Darren. If I don't make ribs at him every once in a while, yeah. then... When I was hoping you say, comes. like, when we win the IWC tag titles, I was hoping for a real positive answer, but... Oh, we're doing things way bigger than just winning the IWC tag titles. Okay. We're taking over IWC. Nice. Nice. <laughs> awesome. The Sandy Gang. It's been a lot of fun to watch uh, your uh, training regimen on the your, the videos, of course. Please go check those out. More coming. More At coming. least oh, once a month, if not just other things we do, too. We do... Yeah. We check out restaurants for you guys. We uh we do gym tips too every now and then, so Good. we do it all for you. Don't worry, one stop shop. Gym tips are big this, these days. Yeah, fitness industry is a booming industry. That's right. Yeah, that's right. If anybody knows how to do it, most wrestlers do. You're looking at them. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you guys out there in the live Facebook. And you guys can keep an eye out on what's coming up. We get the interviews whenever we can. Everybody has busy schedules. I mean, uh, present. Company included, uh, they they they're in a lot of stuff like we just talked about here. Uh, so please keep an eye out on the Indie Wrestling US and Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook to find out when we do have the next people uh, coming up. Uh, we have a few discussions in the works with uh, some some decent names, so hopefully we'll have those. Maybe you'll know about them by the time you hear this if you're on the podcast later. And of course, uh, you can check out the Sadie Gang and Colby Red and. Darren De Niro in their singles careers uh, in the area as well over at IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network. Thank you, uh, everybody. And until next time, support Indie Wrestling and do it for Sadie. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.